YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. It's your boy Big E hitting y'all up. Want to give y'all an update. Hadn't made a video in a while. Um, but I wanted to drop a video, kind of give y'all an update of what's been going on with me since the, um, the, since the new year. Um, first of all, let's take care of our housekeeping. If you have not, go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Um, in the comment section, talk about what y'all might want me to talk about. If it's something that I, I haven't talked about or that you want me to talk about, I'm even more than happy to share what I can with you. Um, you know, my channel is pretty much about um, sharing my journey, but sharing information that um, that I whatever I can with with you all. Um, Another thing, I would like to give a shout out to all the, the new subscribers, everybody that's been rocking with me. I appreciate y'all. You know, I really do. Um, and uh, your boy out here, man, we we pull away, bro. We've been pulling this weight out here. Uh, things are going pretty good right now. But the, the beginning of the year didn't start off great for me. I'm going to share, go through a series of maybe two weeks. This was a two-week period of what? went on um with me oh by the way i always tell y'all where i'm at i'm in uh denver i'm actually in commerce city here at the uh ta uh parked in front of the uh the blue beacon hey this truck stop man I'll tell y'all if y'all don't get here y'all need to get here early uh i know this this is not what i wanted to talk about but this truck stop fills up really really quick and the majority of their parking is reserved parking and the company driver I don't get reimbursed for paying the part, uh, so I tend to not want to pay the part, you know, and this place, they got more reserved parking spots, I think, than they do free parking, so um, if you ever in the Denver area and you're new to trucking or what have you, if, you, if, you, oh, if you've been in the game a little bit, you probably already know, but this truck stop fill, fills up pretty quick. Um, it's a nice truck stop, decent truck stop inside, but it fills up really, really quick. But, okay, so my January, I mean, my, my beginning of the year, January, started off like this. Okay, the day, the, um, the weekend of New Year's, um, I noticed when I was headed, I went to, uh, Alabama, uh, to deliver a load, um, and uh on my way on my way down there i guess uh, uh the, well when i get when i got down there i guess i noticed that i was leaking some cooling i did a 30 i, I grabbed the load I, and then i did, did a uh, 34 hour reset while i was down there waiting for monday monday i delivered the load okay um i was leaking cooling and so on Monday, so and that was the Monday that it snowed down there in the south. So if you was in Alabama and it snowed, it was, and it was right there around January, right there, right after New Year's. I, that's where I was. I was in uh, I was in Coleman, Alabama. I'm not Coleman. I was in I was in Alabama. I don't remember where I was, the city right now. But anyway, I um I I kind of try to treat Creech truck like if it was. If it was mine or if I was if it was my company if it was my truck I would want to get it fixed at one of my shops rather than TA at Love's because because I don't want to pay somebody to fix it and then let's just say they don't get it um, they don't get it done or they fix it and I get a hundred miles down the road and I'm looking at trying to put the truck in the shop again so uh, I had a pre plan that was take that was going to take me to um, right outside of uh, Kansas City, so I figured, hey, what I'll do, I, I think it was going to St. Joe's, I believe, St. Joseph, Missouri, I believe, so, um, what I do, I was like, well, I'll just get the truck to, uh, deliver the load, and then I'll take the truck and put it in the shop, so, in doing that, I had to buy uh, a couple of gallons of, of coolant, you know, Cause it was burning, it was losing about a cool a gallon a day, which which is it was a lot of cooling. So I added um, 
a, a gallon on Monday and then, and then uh, Tuesday to get the rest of the way down from Alabama to St. Joseph's, Missouri, I added another gallon. And I delivered the load. And then I went to the Kansas City yard that afternoon and I checked the truck into the shop. Immediately they said, you know what, we're going to get you a room uh, because we're not going to be able to get to it tonight. And obviously as you run a truck, you're going to have to add, keep adding coolant. So they got me a room at a hotel there in the area. I'm assuming it's a hotel they normally use. It was okay, but uh, I mean, it, 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 it wasn't the best, but it, it wasn't the worst either. You know, it was, it was a solid hotel. If I had to stay there again, I, you know, I wouldn't complain too much. It was okay. All right. Uh, outdated, kind of needing a little facelift, but for the most part, it was okay. So, after I leave, after I uh, leave the, uh, the terminal, I leave the truck in the shop, they said, hey, check with us in the morning. So, I get them till noon. I check back over there at the shop, and they... They said they tell me, hey, um, your truck's um, gonna be in. The, uh, we hadn't gotten gotten your truck into the shop yet, you know. So I'm like, okay, well, what can you do? So uh, they were like, check check with us a, a, around about four thirty five o'clock, um, and we should know something. So I was like, okay, cool. So around five, I guess five thirty, I I called the shop to get to, get an update on my truck. So they tell me the update is um, that they got it in the shop, they broke it down, they're waiting on uh, the part, and then they they and they tell me, hey, um, we got you got a, a DOT issue with your fifth wheel that we're going to have to uh, fix as well. So I asked, well, when, well when, when do you think it might be done? Uh, he said, well, I don't, I'm not, I'm not positive, but um, check with us uh, on tomorrow. I'm like, okay, cool. So Wednesday passes. Thursday, I call, and they they tell me, hey, we're still waiting on on the part um it should be here uh tomorrow it may have gotten held up due to the uh snow and ice storm that that uh hit the area um but they said um if uh they said that it should your truck should be ready on um on Saturday. Actually, they told me that on Wednesday. So that's what they told me that on uh, on not Wednesday. They told they told me that on Thursday about the deal with the truck. So I was like, "Well, okay, it's supposed to be ready on Saturday. So let me at least get in a long truck. Maybe I can get in a truck, run a load, you know, something short." So I let, I then let uh, also my home terminal know, hey, um, my uh, my truck is in the shop. Um, you know, I'm thinking, hell, it's, it's been 24 hours. So I think they got a, I thought they had a 24 hour um, period to get your truck fixed, but I, I found out it's 12. You know, so um, so it's, it's 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 12 hours, not 24. So I call, I let them know on Thursday what the deal was. They say, you know, we're going to look for your truck. We'll we'll get back with you. So the rest of Thursday passed. And Friday morning, I guess around 11, 30, 12 o'clock, they, um, you know, they let me know, hey, we're going to, uh, we got you a truck. Go to the, go to, go to the terminal and ask for this truck number. The Kansas City terminal and ask for this truck number. I'm thinking to myself, okay, cool. So, I talked with the Kansas City terminal about my truck, and they tell me, well, the parts is gonna be it's gonna be probably about a, a week or so before we can get all the parts in. I'm like, okay, well, I definitely gonna need to take quite a bit of quite a bit of my things 
to, um, you know, because I don't know when I'm going to get back to my truck, looks like. So, I spent Friday, you know, I cleaned up the, the loaner truck a little bit. I sprayed it down, I, and I moved some things over into uh, the loaner truck for my truck. Well, uh, they, they, uh, they give me my, my load. I take it. I leave out on, on Saturday. Okay. So the following week, um, I find out, I, you know, I talked to, um, uh, my terminal and they tell me, Hey, well, you, uh, about my breakdown pay. I talked to them about my break breakdown pay. They said, well, you only, um, you're only gonna, you, you're not gonna get paid for this whole breakdown pay because you have to call every day that you're broke down. If you don't call every day that you're broke broke down, um, then you don't you don't get your your breakdown pay. Which to me, I don't understand that. I disagree with with that. But that's their, that's what they said. You know that you, you know you're not gonna get paid every uh, for unless you call every day. My thing is this: I know you guys know that my truck was in the shop because one, my dispatcher riding me to the shop. Two, y'all, the truck gets checked into the computer when you go into the shop. So, regardless, if you know that my truck's in the shop, you know that I'm broke, broke down. Why don't you just pay me for that? Cause you know it. It's not. It's not like you don't know that it, it, that I was in the shop. But needless to say, it's on me uh, because it is in the handbook. So that's that's a lesson to be learned out of it. It's my mistake because I should have known that it was twelve hours, and I should have known that I was supposed to call every day that the truck was broke down. So I have to own that one, you know. Um. So needless to say, I only got forty paid for forty five dollars for sitting in the shop Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, pretty much. Uh, y'all, give me just a second. All right, I'm back, y'all. So, all right. Um, so I was at the point where I didn't get my 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 breakdown pay. So, well, I got forty five dollars. So. I put in for my reimbursement um, for uh, that, that coolant as well, and that I'm still I'm waiting to get paid for the, the reimbursement on it. What you have to do, and again, it's on me for for not knowing. I gotta I gotta own my own stuff, right? So with me not knowing, you know, because I hadn't never been to shop on the road usually. Whenever I put my truck in in the shop, it's I can get to my home terminal. I put it in the shop at my home terminal, and I just go home and come back. Uh, when I get ready to go back out, it's ready most of the time. Every now and then, it's been a uh, you know it's been once or twice that I had to sit on Monday um, when I got ready to come back out. But for the most part, it's always ready. So. Um, what you have to do is if you buy cooling or something like that and you want to get reimbursed, before you buy it, you need to contact Breakdown because they have to give you a, um, a reference number, you know, and, uh, they told me that you can add up, a, up, up to a gallon of water, uh, instead of cooling. I tried to add, just keep it with the cooling to... To try to keep the the chemistry halfway decent on the truck, but needless to say, she told me in the shop next time, just um, I mean, in uh, with breakdown, they told me next time, add just add the water. So, hey, whatever, okay. Next time, I, I'll know now. So, needless to say, we move on from that. So I'm I'm still trying to get reimbursed with that. Um, I know, uh, I went in and I had to do a physical and my DOT physical and my annual review and, um, they did call me last week and I was told by, uh, 
my assistant manager at my terminal that it takes longer to get um, to get your 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 uh, reimbursement. So I haven't given up on that yet. We'll see. If I don't get it, I'll let y'all know. If I do get it, I guess I'll let y'all know that too. You know. But okay, so moving on next week. So I get my load out the house because I think I went home after after that. I got a load. I might have ran a couple more days and I went home. But I went home and I got a load out of the house in like the following week. The load out of the house was a Home Depot load. It was going from Dallas to uh, Fulton. Uh, oh, no. It was going to Mexico, Missouri, right? So I left out Monday. Uh, it was kind of midday Monday or so. I left out. Um, I got up above Joplin. I kind of got up there at, around the uh, Conway uh, uh, rest area, which is right there. It's, it's two big rest areas right there out of out of Joplin. Uh, I think I think it may be around the Mount Vernon area, Mount Vernon, Missouri area, somewhere around there. But it's two big rest areas. If you've stopped at them, you know which ones I'm talking about. It's both they're, they're on both sides. They're pretty big, nice rest areas, right? So, plenty of parking, you know. Um, so I get there. I spend the night there. The next morning I get up and I'm ready to go the rest of the way to Mexico, Missouri. It's uh, like 140 miles, 150 miles. So as I get up, I get a message telling me that they've rescheduled the delivery time for this load. Now. What I don't understand is it was supposed to be a drop and hook. So the load was supposed was going to drop. What I didn't understand is if they rescheduled it, I mean, the, the trailer can just sit on the yard until they get ready to unload it, you know, which was going to be like four day, four more days after they rescheduled it. But, hey, whatever. They told me, hey, uh... Don't deliver that load. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. Uh, don't deliver that load. Take that load to um, East St. Louis to the drop yard in East St. Louis. So I ran that load up to East St. Louis. I dropped it at the drop yard there. I got a pre plan on the way up to, to pick up a, a Dollar General load on the East St. Louis yard. Right? So I grabbed that. And they said I had from like 4 o'clock to 11 p.m. to deliver that load at the Dollar General in Fulton, Missouri. Now, I've been there. I, I, I was told that you can drop there. So I'm thinking, but I think it showed as a live load. So I was like, eh, usually live loads are set time, but whatever. So I take that. I take that load to Fulton. I check in at the guard shack at the Dollar General, and the guard tells me this load was supposed to deliver it like two days ago. At basically the same time, but two days ago. I'm like, well, they just they just sent me back down here with it. They said, oh, I know what it was on my on my side. It showed that from the day that he was talking about it could have delivered to 11 p.m. the night that I was trying to deliver. But he was like, no, you can't, you know, you can't do that. He said, you got to have an appointment. And he said, now you got to have an appointment. Uh, you got to schedule your appointment 48 hour, hours out. So I was going to have to reschedule for two days after, uh, two days later. So I'm like, man, uh, so, I call dispatch. I'm sitting there in the, in their staging area. I call dispatch, and um, they tell me, and this is night dispatch now. They tell me, hey, we'll look into it. Uh, we're going to reach out to the, the uh, 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 customer relations manager. So, i like, okay. So, I know how that works. You know. It may be a little bit before I hear from them. So I was like, well, ain't no sense in sitting over here. There's a couple of truck stops down there. That's about six miles down the road. 
going to go over to the truck stop, at least that way if they if they don't tell you, if they, if they don't get back with you, you're already somewhere where you can be parked for the night. So I go park at the truck stop. Needless to say, I never, uh, I reached back out after about 30 minutes and they said, well, we're going to have you T-call it. They never told me, but they never told me where they're going to T-call it. They said, we're going to let, I'll send you the information or we'll get the information out to you. Rest of the night passed and I was tired, so I didn't even call them back. They, they never sent anything back out to me. So next morning I reached out to my actual uh, DM and she tells me, oh shoot, I didn't even, uh, what happened with that load? I was like, well, they didn't, they didn't take it because the appointment time was wrong. She was like, oh, I didn't know that. She was like, uh, they told me they wanted me to t call, but they didn't tell me if they wanted me to t call it back in East St. Louis or where. So I don't, you know, I didn't, I, I was waiting to hear back. She was like, okay, well, let me reach out to the planner. So she reaches out to them and they, tell, they basically tell her, hey, take, have me take the load back up to East St. Louis. So I go back up to East St. Louis where I dropped that Home Depot load and dropped that, uh, the Dollar General load back up there. On the way, they give me a print, another pre-plan. This pre-plan was, uh, was a trailer move. They wanted me to bobtail back down to Fulton, Missouri to that same Dollar General that I just checked in with that told me they could not uh, accept the load, get an empty trailer out of there, and take it to Lafayette, Indiana to Wabash to exchange. I'm like, okay, cool. So... I bobtail back down there. I grabbed the empty trailer. I'm headed to Wabash. Okay, I can't get there that same day. I get there the next day. I check in at Wabash. I drop the I drop the old trailer at the main at the main yard, the main plant, uh, and they direct me to the offsite to pick up the new trailer. So a lot of talking, y'all. I know, right? But, um, okay, so they they tell me to, um, okay, go to the, the off yard. I go to the off yard. They give me, the dispatch gave me the trailer number, so I already knew the trailer number. So I check in with the uh, with the gate. They tell me, okay, that trailer number ought to be in this slot out there on the yard. Don't hold me to the slot because they've been uh, kind of putting them anywhere. So, I drive the yard. I see plenty of creek trailers. I, I drove the yard once. I drove the yard two more times, and I did that because I I don't want to be the guy that as soon as I go back over and tell them that the trailer's not there, that uh, they go out there and find it. But that trailer wasn't there, right? So I go back over and I'm starting to tell him. He's like, "Well, I was just gonna come get you. Yeah, that trailer's not there." One of your other uh, drivers took their trailer like 10 days ago. I'm like, okay. So so I reach out to dispatch. By this time, because by this time, I'm, I'm, it, was, it was right before a shift, the shift changed. So I wasn't going to get my dispatch. I was going to get the nighttime dispatcher that was covering for mine. So I, I send them a message because... You know, calling you, you're going to have trouble, uh, you know, getting through. So I, I sent a message. I wait. I wait about 30, 45 minutes, and nobody answers. So then I, I call. I get them on the phone. And I tell them, hey, they want, they said that this trailer was picked up uh, by a driver 10 days ago. Well, who's the driver? I send them all that. I give them that information. She was like, well, I'm going to send it over to the planner and see what they want you to do. Okay? Cool. So I sit and I wait. I wait another 30, 45 minutes. Well, 45 minutes to an hour, okay? To be honest. Nothing. So I call back dispatch. And she was like, okay, let me send something back over to uh, see what they want you to do. So she sends back, uh, she sends a message back over to him, and 
30 minutes later, they sent me a message saying, uh, go to Indianapolis, pick up a, a, a empty off the Indianapolis uh, yard. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, hold up. There's 30 empty trailers, brand new trailers out here that somebody's going to have to pick up. What sense does it make me to for make for me to go to the Indianapolis yard to pick up an empty trailer when there's 30 out there? So I send I send a message and then I call and I and I call this. I said, why why can't I pick up a, a, a trailer out here? I mean, it's 30 brand new trailers out here. Literally, I drove past all of them looking for the trailer that was sent to me. Why do I need to go Indianapolis to the yard just to pick up an empty trailer? So she says, well, let me reach back out to them and see, um, you know, maybe they know something we don't know, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay. So she reaches back out to them. I said, now wait. And I just kind of got frustrated. So after about 30 minutes, I just said, you know what? I don't even worry about it. I called her back and said, hey, don't worry about it. I'll just go to Indianapolis because I hadn't gotten any message to this point. So, um, and it's getting late. So, I go to the Indianapolis yard. Luckily for me, um, luckily for me, uh, they had a trailer, they had an empty trailer on the yard. So, um, I'm like, okay, cool. So, I was supposed to pick up in Indianapolis, so that's why it wasn't that big of a deal. But it just having to go. I didn't know if I was gonna really find an empty trailer there, but uh, luckily, luckily for me, they had a, a couple. So I grab it. I go to. I think I picked up at Quaker. So I went over to Quaker. I was supposed to be. The trailer was loaded at by four. I think four o'clock I think it was supposed to be ready and I had a four to eleven o'clock to pick it up that night. So I'm like, well I still got time to pick it up. You know, it's like eight, nine it's like eight, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So I get over there, I um check in, they tell me, hey, that's tra it's not loaded. <laughs> they said they ain't even big you know, they can put it in the door but it ain't it ain't they ain't even start loading that trailer yet. So a young lady at, at at the gate told me she was gonna say she was like, "Well, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna see if I can't help you out. Uh, make this a live load." So she made it a live load, and to their credit, it did not take them long. They got me in and out of there in less than two hours. It probably was about a uh, once I got in the door, it was probably about 45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes, and I was I was leaving. So shout out to to, to them over there at Quaker that day because they got me out of there. Um, I, I checked with my dispatch the next day and she told me she told me she didn't see why I couldn't have just grabbed another, one of the other empty trailers. I should have been able to do that. So I don't know. Dispatch kind of dropped the ball on that one. And that was <laughs> that was a week I think I had like nearly 2,000 miles and I only delivered one load that week so that's how you do that that's going to be my story in fact I might leave, put that as a title deliver, did 2,000 miles only delivered one load because that's all it was but I'm not going to hold y'all that was uh, that's how my year started um, things have gotten I mean they've moved they, they're moving in the right direction now We we got past all that I got my truck out of the shop uh, about two weeks ago. So right at the end of the month, I got my truck out of the shop. So it was in the shop maybe two week, two and a half weeks maybe, uh, three weeks. Um, it's running fine. I'm not having any issues. They fixed everything. Um, again, they, you know, er everything is good. But, hey, really, the, the thing about this that you can take from this, if you come over here to Crete, I'm not saying that, that that they're bad, uh, they're they're bad with breakdown, but I'm saying you need to know your policies on on breakdown because I have to kind of own that. I st I still don't I don't understand why they just don't pay it, but 
their rules are their rules. So I have to abide by them when I don't. You got to take, you got to to understand your consequences when you don't do what the handbook tells you you should do. You know. So again, if y'all out here on the road, man, y'all be safe. Um, just know we still out here pulling weight, bro. Again, um, I, I uh, if you decide to come over to Crete, and it's something that I say uh, helps you. Um, all my information is in the description. I'm not doing this to uh, to re to recruit you. I'm just sharing information that I would have liked to know before I came. Um, and again, uh, yeah, we out here pulling away, bro. If you have not, again, subscribe, comment, share, and like uh, the video. If you have anything that I need to talk about that I hadn't, that y'all would like to hear me talk about go ahead and uh add that to the comments too uh if you out here and you driving you know i'm here in denver supposed to uh, supposed to be like a 90 percent some chance of snow tomorrow y'all be careful out here in this winter weather slow it down and um just know that the most important thing is that you get home to your family god bless y'all and uh be careful out here